the Endeavour and the First Fleet voyages between 1768 and 1792 reveal a unique flora and fauna that had never been seen before in Britain. The Endeavour voyage set out to explore new lands and undertake scientific discoveries. Whereas the First Fleet voyages were very much a commercial enterprise to establish a naval base in the area and to use convict labour to achieve that end. The reason why the Endeavour voyage was so important scientifically as well as representing a benchmark flora for Australia is because almost half of the species they collected were new to European science. The key people on the Endeavour voyage would of course been Captain Cook for his navigational skills, Joseph Banks who was an aristocrat and a talented amateur botanist of the day, and he also took with him Daniel Solander, an assistant botanist, chief artist Sidney Parkinson and a team of other artists and servants including his own two greyhounds. Here we have two specimens collected by Banks and Solander a specimen of Banksia from Botany Bay and a specimen of Delenia lata collected in Endeavour River. And behind them you can see the sketches made by Sidney Parkinson on board the Endeavour at the time and the finished artwork. He was very careful to make sure he gathered all the important characteristics of the plant. The colour of the leaves, both sides of the leaves of a nation, but also the flowering parts they would have been coming across plants such as the banks here, here, the likes of which they had never ever seen before. So it must have been a tremendously exciting expedition. The first fleet didn't contain any official artists or naturalists. But there are a number of amateur naturalists who were very keen to capture the flora and fauna that they were seeing before them. Amongst them was the Surgeon General of the colony, John White. He commissioned one of the convicts, Thomas Watling, who was a convicted forger, but also a trained landscape artist, to draw hundreds of images of the flora, fauna, and the people of the Port Jackson area. The images aren't scientifically accurate. Watling has attempted to follow the norms of scientific illustration, but hasn't quite pulled it off in the way that Parkinson was able to. A young midshipman from the HMS Sirius, George Raper, also drew a lot of images. Raper was an amateur artist and painted for his own pleasure. They are big and bold and colourful. It almost looks as though his animals are smiling in their pictures. The third source of the collection is collectively known as the Port Jackson Collection. This is a collection of 69 paintings drawn by artists we don't know the names of. Despite them not always being scientifically accurate, the First Fleet collection is one of the most important in the museum because it depicts a number of animals that are now extinct or under threat. George Raper's painting of the Lord Howe Island pigeon is only one of two paintings which proved the bird actually existed as no specimens were ever preserved. Above all, the First Fleet collection is one of the most important in the museum as it depicts a vast array of Australian flora and fauna and also provides a unique snapshot into a key moment of Australia's social and cultural history.